DuckDuckGo now is a really well-known search engine. You know, the one with a duck as its mascot and users' privacy as its tagline. Yeah, that one. But is it really safe? And how does it really work? And more importantly, does it make sense to make it your default search engine from Google? Answers to that and a lot more coming right up in this episode of Elemental where we talk about the smaller things in tech that make a much bigger impact on the real world. You can catch us every Sunday at 1 p.m. And if you love this series, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and also hit that bell icon for the latest notifications. All right, let's start off by understanding how DuckDuckGo came into existence, how it works, and more importantly, how it is different from Google. So DuckDuckGo was founded in 2008 by a man named Gabriel Weinberg. The original idea was to provide a better experience than the popular search engines of the time, rather than focusing on privacy. The privacy aspect became its USP in 2010, when it was decided that DuckDuckGo wouldn't track a user's search history, cookies, IP address, or any other personal information. Also, fun fact, you don't always have to type in duckduckgo.com. Instead, you can always type ddg.gg or duck.com to access it. And also, if you like it, well, you can always bookmark it to make it even more accessible. So how does it work? Well, like a regular search engine with just a few differences here and there. A search engine is basically an index of web pages hosted on the internet, much like how you used to have yellow pages or encyclopedias in the past. This is called the database. The database is constantly updated by pieces of code called crawlers that keep a track of websites on an hourly basis as web pages on them are constantly being updated. While this is all good, getting relevant search results requires you to develop algorithms that match important pieces of data to a user's search. And this is the part where data tracking really helps a search engine. If a search engine keeps a track of what is being searched in a particular area or more specifically by a certain user, it can deliver more relevant search results. In the episode in which we talked about how search engines work, which I highly recommend you to check out by the way, I gave the example of searching for a gaming mouse. This means two things, but the engine should be able to differentiate between the two and the distinction in context comes by data tracking and data collection. While this is a place where data collection is absolutely acceptable, there are other places where it is considered questionable. In the episode of Elemental where we talked about WhatsApp's changes in privacy policy, we also talked about why data privacy is so important for you because it can have all kinds of repercussions for you. From employers on job seeking websites, refusing to give you a job just because you posted something really stupid on social media five, ten years ago, to having an awkward encounter with a cashier at a grocery store where the cashier is like, do you want to buy some baby foods? And you are like, huh? And the cashier is like, yeah, I can see that you have been searching for baby related things on search engines and you are like, huh? Yeah, that has happened in the past. I'm not making this thing up because the stuff that these search engines collect from you, the data that they collect from you is also at times handed over to advertisers. So yes, data tracking is a pretty big deal. And there are a lot of people who think that search engines shouldn't collect data from you and create like a profile out of you. And this is where search engines like DuckDuckGo come into the picture. When you click on links from Google and Bing, even in private mode, the search terms are sent to the site you're visiting in the HTTP referral header. When you search for that site, your computer automatically shares information such as your IP address. This information can be used to identify you. DuckDuckGo prevents it from happening by default on its search results. Instead, when you click on a link on the site, it redirects that request in such a way that it prevents sending your search terms to other sites. The sites know that somebody visited them, but they don't know what search you entered beforehand, nor can they use the personal information to identify you. All right, now let's talk about how DuckDuckGo makes money. Gabriel Weinberg, the founder and CEO of DuckDuckGo has maintained that it is a profitable company despite having just a little over 100 employees. Weinberg says that the profits come from donations but also from advertising. Now comes the question, if they are not tracking any data from you, how are they showing ads to you? Well, it's a very simple answer. Most of the ads that are displayed on DuckDuckGo are shown to you on the basis of keywords that you search and not 
your tracking history, your browsing history. Now for the important question that keeps people from trying out new tech. What will you lose when you make a shift from Google to DuckDuckGo? I ran a battery of searches on DuckDuckGo and Google just to compare these two websites so that you can make a decision based on that. When making an easy search like the meaning of a word, Google has its own widget that gives you a lot of information without having to scroll much unless it's not of much use. It lets you play the pronunciation too and also helps you find the roots of that word. DuckDuckGo doesn't have that, but it does show you relevant pages up top. Do know that in both searches, we didn't see any ads on the top. All right, next up, let's search for some trending topics and see what kind of results we get there. Both search engines show similar search results, but the thing that I'm searching for is around the top of the suggestions when it comes to Google. You get a recent news widget at around the same place on both search engines, but when it comes to DuckDuckGo, the first link is an ad. Google also shows what else is being searched around the same topic by other users. Now let's search for a specific query that requires context. I want to know about the latest Avengers movie, but it is one of those times when I can't recall the exact name of the movie. Let's see if I can find some relevant suggestions and some contextual information on the movie. So in both cases, yes, I do find the name of the movie appearing on top, but I also find a Wikipedia widget on the right in both. But Google also gives you the call to action links. So here we have Watch Now on Hotstar. Even though I don't want to watch it right now, I get to know where I can watch it. All right, now it's time to search for something that is even more difficult to search. You know how there's an earworm or basically a repeating part of a song that gets stuck in your ear, in your head after you watch an Instagram reel or TikTok if you're using that. Yeah, searching for that is very difficult. Even if you're using Shazam, a lot of times it doesn't understand what you're humming. And the final resort is to go online and just search one little word that is stuck in your head. Now, I'm not going to sing out the song that I want to search, but I will type it out and you will probably understand which song I'm going for. But the, the, the thing over here is that Google and DuckDuckGo have to understand that I'm looking for a certain thing. And well, Google wins this round because it found the song that I was looking for. So what have we learned? Well, in terms of widgets, there's not a lot of difference between DuckDuckGo and Google. Sure, DuckDuckGo doesn't have that pronunciation widget that I absolutely love because it helps me while I'm making these videos. I need to know how to pronounce certain words. Gabriel Weinberg. Gabriel Weinberg. But anyway, yeah, DuckDuckGo doesn't have that, but it shouldn't be like, a complete deal breaker for you if you're moving from Google to DuckDuckGo. I've tried it out and I didn't really see a lot of difference, right? Um, other than that, I need to tell you one thing that I haven't mentioned about the search, the, the speed of both of these, you know, uh, search engines, how much time they take to display some search results and both of them are actually pretty much comparable. So you shouldn't have a problem in that regard either. Now, one thing to mention over here is that the battery of searches or basically the search battery that I just created. Yeah, that's a very short one and it is also very cher cherry picked. Like it is suited for very specific scenarios. So I want you guys to try out both of these search engines and then let me know your observations and your findings down in the comment. But it all depends on you at the end of the day because you are the one who uses the search engine. And if you think that having a widget at the expense of some privacy is fine by you, then you know, who am I to stop you? And on that note, it's time to end this particular video. I really, really, really hope I helped you out in some way. And if I did, do not forget to like this video and also share it with your friends. Remember that new elemental videos come out every Sunday at 1 p.m. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And also for all things tech, log on to gadgets360.com.